every morning and evening we go out to the pasture and collect the milking flock using the dogs. This year we're milking about 34 animals. Milking takes about an hour and that's not counting setup and cleanup. The flock, because they're so used to this, they readily follow the shepherd into our barnyard and into the barn where they gather for milking. We set up a series of gates where they cross the aisle and come up a ramp. Sheep like going up very much, so they like to go up the ramp. Because we're 100% grass fed, we don't feed grain in the milking parlor, but they do get a, about a tablespoon of alfalfa pellets, which they like. We call that parlor bait. And the animals come in six at a time and lock into the stanchion. I go through and strip all the ewes, so I take a few squirts of milk out of each teat, and that lets me feel the udder, assess the udder for mastitis or anything abnormal, and also the milk that's right there in that teat canal or close to it is usually much higher in somatic cell count. You want a low cell count in your milk, so it lets me get that high cell count out of there. We actually milk dry, meaning we do not clean, we don't wash and dry udders first unless an animal comes in very dirty. We find that milking dry actually reduces our plate count, as less bacteria. It's actually cleaner milk that way. We use mechanical milkers. We have a vacuum pump with a two horse motor on it. I attach the milker to two animals and encourage the letdown of their milk by kind of imitating what a lamb would do when they nurse and that's sort of slapping the udder a little bit, encouraging that letdown. Doing some machine stripping of the milk, that's you know forcing the milk out of the udder mechanically, a little faster than it would normally come. And then I uh, move on to the next two animals. I do the whole row and then send them out and bring the next row in. We don't have a high throughput parlor, but what we have is a parlor that's very pleasant to work in. It's pleasant for the animals, it's pleasant for the milker. That's important. We use a California mastitis test often in the parlor. This is something usually used at cow dairies, but perfectly applicable to sheep. And this is a very low tech test that will tell you if you have an animal with subclinical mastitis. So if there's an animal I suspect might have something going on, either her udder seems a little bit funny or um, she's not producing as much milk or maybe it seems like her udder is sore, I'll take a few squirts of milk into the paddle. So one side of the udder I'll squirt into one round part of the paddle and the other side into the other part of the paddle. Just a few squirts and then add equal part reagent to the amount of milk I have in there and then swirl. If the milk is normal, it will have kind of a dull grayish blue color and will still be very liquidy. If there's a high amount of somatic cells, meaning there's mastitis or subclinical mastitis, you'll see the color will be a much more vivid purple and it will gel. We are not a certified organic dairy, but we're a farmer's pledge farm and we're committed to using uh, little or no chemical or artificial inputs on our animals. So if I do have mastitis, I really don't want to use antibiotics at all. So I don't. We don't typically have a big problem with mastitis. We do occasionally have animals with some subclinical mastitis, which those high cell counts actually aren't good for cheese making. And we're regulated by the state for the somatic cell count in our milk. So it's something I want to keep down. If I have a ewe that's got a high cell count, I'm using a topical peppermint cream that I can buy at most farm supply stores and I apply that massage or udder with it every time she's in the milking parlor, and I keep testing her. A lot of those use their somatic cells will eventually come down, but if they don't, 
what I've been doing is I dry off that side in that I just stop milking that side of the U and uh, she'll come in healthy next year. And, uh, I'm doing so one of the things about sheep is they don't make very much milk, but the milk they make is really, really good quality. It's high in butter, fat, and protein. A U will average in our flock over the course of her lactation a little over a quart a day in production. Right now, in late spring, early summer, I'm getting about 10 to 11 gallons of milk a day from 34 sheep. And that's milking twice a day. And that will go down throughout the season. It will also vary depending on the quality of the pasture and the weather. My oldest milking ewe that I have right now is 11 years old, and that's tended to be about the oldest that they're at all productive. This ewe I'm going to keep till next year unless something goes awry. So that's a good old ewe. Now granted I don't have a lot that age, but five is considered the peak of production. A five-year-old is at the peak of her production pretty much, but I have six, seven, eight-year-olds. And again, that comes down to stress management. I feel like if you can let them lead a lower stress life, you're just going to get a longer lifespan. And if you have a good you, you want her around as long as you can. So after milking, we collect the milking equipment and all of the milk and take it into our milk house, which is also our dairy and cheese making facility. Under current regulations, we could not co-house those two processes. We would have to have a a separate milk house from our dairy facility. But because this facility was built in the 80s, um, we're grandfathered under old rules. And so our milk house and cheese making facility are one and the same. We filter the milk and then we chill the milk. And we want to chill it as rapidly as we can to reduce bacteria growth. I don't make cheese every day. I usually make it every other day or every two days. And so the milk has to be stored in preparation for that. The State Department of Ag and Markets in New York comes every month and takes a milk sample from our milk. Because I'm a cheese making facility, they regulate our milk basically. They want to look at its quality. And so they test it for the what level of somatic cells we have in it and also what level of bacteria we have in it and whether or not there's antibiotics in it. So that's tested every month. And if we're over a certain level of those things, they will issue you a warning, uh, tell you to bring those levels down. I mean, they could ultimately shut you down, but that's much further down the line. But as a cheese maker, I really want my milk quality to be high. So I'm really attentive to that. And I'm glad they test the milk because I want to know what's in it. So it's really important to thoroughly clean your milk equipment after each milking. And so our concern about chlorine residues in our equipment because that would kill our, some of our bacterial cultures when we're making cheese. So we do a lot of hot water rinsing after we've used chlorinated detergents. And we also use a biodegradable soap that's you know fairly easy on the environment. We're just very attentive to this process because it's important, yet it is long and boring and arduous, but very important. <laughs> After we're done milking and cleaning the equipment, the shepherd then takes the flock back out to the pasture where they get a fresh break of grass. The ewes readily leave to get their fresh forage.